How's it going, everyone? Um, so yeah, as you heard, uh, maybe you know me, maybe you don't. My name is Alejandro. Um, I work at Microsoft. I am presenting today. Ba basically, I'm going to talk about bare metal in, in Open Embedded. Uh, it's a long title, but uh, I did wanted to make sure that uh, I said both developing and testing those two words because it's it's a whole deal. Uh, the idea of this is basically that um, uh, products usually have different uh, processors and then some processors may run some something in bare metal, some processors may run Linux and you're already working on Linux, you already have the flow to work on Linux so why not use the same flow to work on the open metal, open, sorry, on the bare metal stuff. Uh, the outline for today is runtime testing in open embedded, just a quick uh, dry run over that. Uh, the bare metal tool chains that we have in open embedded a, I'm going to go through a bare metal example, the actual code that's uh, there, and how do we put all that stuff together. So first, let's go look at runtime, runtime testing in Open Embedded. Uh, so what do you have to do to, to do runtime testing in Open Embedded? And I'm not going to talk about OE self-test. I'm going to talk only and specifically about test, test image today. Uh, essentially, all you have to do is in your, in your com file, you have to put uh, test image on image classes, uh, if you're on master, if you're on older branches, you might have to do inherit plus equals instead. Um, the, you have to define the test target. By default, it's QMU. So if you're just running QMU, you don't have to do anything. But uh, if you, for example, have a device on the network and you want to runtime test that device, you need to like set, for example, simple remote and set the, both the target and the IP addresses for those. Uh, so, so, it, so the host can communicate with the, with the target and test it. Uh, the, le the, the test cases themselves are located in the meta directory, live, OAQA, runtime, and then test cases. You can definitely just ls there, and there's a bunch of those things uh, that are interesting. In this case, I'm setting two, um, two test cases, SSH and ping. Uh, there's others. Uh, I don't know. I like parse locks, but uh, th there's a, a lot of that you can do. Parse locks basically looks at the boots the device and do, does a like demask and then uh, checks for failed error anything like that right so it makes sure that you don't have a new error in when you're booting the kernel um, so if you do that the this is a gif image I am not gonna run it myself yeah it it is it's actually changing here uh, it'll finish in a second. The, all I did was I ran bit big, uh, my image and that's dash C test image. And I can see I ran two test cases, the ping and SSH. And I, I did those two specifically because as you can see, one, one of them was skipped and the other one was uh, passed properly. Uh, again, that's the start of the GIF. Um, okay, you saw that part already. Uh, so before, like I said, I, I defined these two, but there are dependencies between the test cases. For example, the SSH test case uh, actually was skipped because there's no SSH server on the image. So that kind of thing can happen. Uh, ping was successful, which is what we wanted. Uh, but what I wanted you to see was the format, um, how do you run it, and basically that the, this is what you get. This test passed, this test was skipped, stuff like that, right? Or it failed, uh, which could happen as well. Um, Okay, this is like the, the bad slide. This and the next one are pretty bad, but they're the part of the, the comments that are on the code. So if you, if you go and look at the test image class, this is what you'll see. Um, I needed to put it. Uh, I'm going to explain it in, in a little bit. Um, okay, so <clears throat> what this does is it defines boot patterns that the test image infrastructure looks for when, it, when, the, system, when the target system is booting. Um, there's several, there's four different patterns. Where are they? Um, I can't even see. Okay, so we have uh, search login succeeded, send login user, um, search reach prompt, and search command finished. So those are the following, the, the four possible um, uh, patterns that you can set. Uh, typically, it's going to make more sense in a little bit. Uh, this is where they are defined by default on, I think this is QMU runner.py, 
uh, somewhere in the infrastructure. Again, there's, this is a little better because of syn syntax. Uh, these are the four that are possible, and these are the way they are defined. Uh, these are kind of like in order. So the first one that happens is uh, search reach prompt, which searches if the target has reached the prompt. And it basically is looking for login and then column. And then the next one would be send login user, which uh, in, in the reference distribution, uh, it's, it's root. We log in as root by default, right? Uh, the search login succeeded and search command finished basically look for a prompt that says, oh, my command finished or I was able to actually log in as the root user. Uh, this is kind of like the flow or of how it works. I, I hope it makes more sense uh, with this. Essentially what happens is that at this point, the system starts booting. The, the target is on gray, the host is on green, uh, although this is not the host, but still. Uh, so it starts booting. At some point, the target is going to print on the console login. And then at this point, the, ho the host is going to see, oh, I reached the login. So I am going to send the, the pattern, which is root. Uh, the, the target is going to log in. It's going to have the, the pattern for the, for the root prompt. So that means the login was successful. Then at that point, the, the host is going to say, OK, now I can run commands. So I'm going to send a command. And I'm going to check the command finished. I see the new prompt, and then it, I read the output. That's how the tests are performed. So this is kind of a problem for bare metal applications because the, I mean, yeah, for Linux is great because we have a prompt, and we log in, and we have a user and everything, right? But uh, that's the way the infrastructure was assigned because it was for Linux. But for bare metal, it's kind of an issue that we're going we're gonna to have to handle in, in a little bit. All right, so the next topic is the uh, bare metal application, sorry, toolchains in, in Open Embedded. Uh, so what do you have, let's say you wanted to try it, okay? What do you have to do to, to create a, a bare metal toolchain? Uh, same thing as always, you clone the repo, you source the environment. In this case, I'm passing the uh, machine and the, the, the QMU ARM64, this, this is what I'm using to test. And my TC libc, I'm defining it as bare metal on my local.conf. After that, all you have to do is bit bake, bare metal, hello world, and that's it. Um, the, what you should get is if, you, if after that you can just run run QMU, uh, you should get something like this, which is the run of, run QMU, of, of QMU, and you get a string on your serial console. Um, essentially, this is what I'm doing here. Uh, on my local.conf, again, I define my machine and I define my DC libc as bare metal. And I got another cool GIF. I have the GIFs because I, I, um, I, I like running stuff, but at the same time, I like it working. And like <laughs> half an hour ago, it wasn't working. So just to make sure. Um, let's see if, uh, let me, let me uh, wait for it to start again. The, essentially, I just did that, right? Like I have my local.conf. Uh, my machine in TC Lipsy, and I did bit bake, bare metal, hello world. And obviously, I built it from S8, so it's, it's really fast. And what I wanted you to see was I, I put TC Lipsy on my variables here because I, I wanted you to see. So I, you can see that I'm building bare metal TC Lipsy instead of, uh, you know, glibc or muscle or something. Uh, it does it, the tasks for as if it was an image. You could see like the do image was running at some point. Um, the deploy artifacts, you can see that they are in the temp directory, temp deploy images, uh, QMRM64, and we have a binary, we have an L file, and we have like a manifest, uh, QMEboot.conf. I, I wanted to show the QMEboot.conf because that's, that's what makes possible to run, run QMU uh, directly, but those are our artifacts. Um, after, too fast. After uh, we built that, again, like I said, I put the, these are the artifacts, and if I just run run QMU and then pass no graphic to it, because obviously there's, there's no GUI, um, it runs QMU and we get our great string there, hello open embedded on ARM64. Depending on the architecture that you're using, you're going to get a different string. I, I just wanted to change that to make sure that people know uh, that it's working and building for a different um, target architecture. 
So, so that's how it works. Let me see. I'm actually going to run that just so you can see. Uh, I already built it here, but uh, if I run QMU, I should see the same thing. Oh, I, 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 this is a spoiler, okay? I, I changed the code. It says false them there. I shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> one second. So if I build the old version, oh, no, this is actually the... This was fine. I just didn't rebuild. <laughs> you see, this is why GIFs are better. But so much less fun. Ah, that's true. <laughs> okay, so if I rebuild it and rerun it, it should say, there you go. Hello, open embedded on ARM64. That's great. Uh, I can't type anything on the keyboard. It doesn't work. I just exit and let's continue. <clears throat> okay, so the next topic is so now you know how to build a an example application and how to use the the DC libc bare metal. Uh, the next topic itself is looking at uh, so what is that what is that actually doing? What what does that code look like? Uh, so QM sorry Bitbig sorry. Uh, Open Embedded for ARM64 uses the Verd machine. Um, so what I essentially what I had to do was look at the code base for QMU and seeing what uh, what devices what device am I emulating. Um, I got three things, three important things from there. Uh, you can also look at the DTS dump from QMU, and you can look at the the addresses where the kernel is supposed to be loaded, the where the RAM is located, and where the UART is located as well. Uh, the kernel, you can't get it from the DTS because it's it, it has an uh, QMU puts it at an, at an offset. Uh, but here are the links where you can find it in the code and see that for a an ARM64 kernel, there's an offset of 8000, and then you can see where the RAM is and you can see where the UART is. So those are the important things that we need from our emulated device. Obviously, this would change if you have a a, a real target. Um, <clears throat> so again, so QMU is emulating a PL011 uh, device, and from the ARM developers manual, we can get this uh, this table, which is the offsets for all the registers on the UART. I mean, for any UART, you probably would do something similar. Uh, you can see where the data, data register is, re receive status, flag register, stuff like that, and this is the stuff that we're going to need uh, to either print or read something from the from the console. Uh, the third thing that you need uh, to to create a, a bare metal application in this case is is the the startup code and the linker script. Uh, for Linux things are really nice and you can just get the C runtime from from the toolchain and and you don't care about this stuff. You create you compile a program and you don't really care how it's loaded at, at runtime. Uh, but in this case we have to tell it how to do it. Um, there's, this is the startup code, and this is the linker script. Uh, this is supposed to be an example, so I put a bunch of comments in there so, to, to make, uh, so people can read it and, and it makes more sense to them. Uh, some of them are the same, you know, like the offset for, the, for where the kernel is loaded, uh, where we're setting our, uh, our, our stack, uh, essentially, the linker script, what it's doing, it's creating an L file and organizing the sections where they're supposed to be. And the startup code, all it's, well, the, the, the purpose of it is that it's jumping to a function at some point, okay? And this could be named main. Uh, normally, it would be named main. I didn't want to name it main because I want it to be an example, right? So I named it uh, C entry. Uh, we defined our start symbol, which is the same as this one. And again, essentially what's going to happen, it's going to look at the L file and it's going to jump at the C entry function or symbol whenever, wherever it finds it. So that's the, the high level. Um, so that, to print that stuff on the screen, we define where the UART is located, again from the ARM developers manual. And this is very simple. I have, this is the C entry function. Uh, so, so when the, the, the system starts booting, it's going to jump to this symbol and then it's going to execute this function, print UR0 
and essentially before until I find a, a null string at the end, I'll st I start uh, sending characters to my uh, to my UART. So that's 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 how it works. The 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 basic I would say. Um, so how do we put all this stuff together? Am I going too fast? Okay. So how do we put all this stuff together? Um, we <clears throat> what do we need? We we have the code that we want to test. Um, again, I explained kind of a little bit about the boot patterns and how they work, um, and we also need a test case. Okay. Um, so those are the three things that we need to to test a bare metal application. The <clears throat> there's on there's another bare metal uh, C library or TC libc in in Open Embedded. It's called New Live. Um, you don't have to do this, but you can, and that's why I'm doing it. Uh, New Leaf is, is basically a C library that's for embedded devices, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty bare bones. It doesn't have a lot of stuff, but it does provide, it, it has two parts of it, uh, the C library part and the, the BSP part. The C library is actually New Leaf. The, the BSP part, it's, it's called LibGloss. Uh, and it does provide a couple of things, you know, like printf, uh, integer conversion, stuff like that, and string comparison. Like I said, you don't have to do this. I decided to do this just to make sure that it's, you know, spread the word that this is, this is possible as well. The only difference here is that I, I set my TC libc to new live instead of bare metal. In fact, if you set it to new live and you don't use anything from it, well, it's, it's really not going to affect it. Um, it's just not, when you're compiling the application, the these, uh, the syscalls are not going to be available. Uh, and I did a mixture, okay? I didn't do the entire new lib stuff because it's, it gets complicated. Um, okay, but what I want you to, what I want you to know was that I using, uh, I was using new lib as my C library from now on. Uh, so the other thing, <coughs> uh, remember when I said that there was going to be a problem because the test image expects certain things to happen when it's booting. Well, we need to accommodate the, the, the bare metal code that we just saw to make sure that this, uh, this works properly. The, I'm going to open a terminal here. Um, give me one second. Okay, so this is, this is the the source. This is a new source. Um, it's a little more complicated. It just adds more, uh, basically, where the offset for for that UR were located. Uh, now it's not as simple. I need to check uh, the flag register for transferring uh, bits uh, for receiving and stuff like that. But basically, what I want you to see was I have a function that can read the UR now. Uh, again, I need to check the flag register, see if there's no error, and then if, if there's an error, I get the error. If not, then I just pass the, the character to my buffer. Uh, and I have a function that is very simple, that's called check command, and it on, essentially it just compares strings and sees um, if I see OE and then a carriage return, then I will print welcome. If I see a question mark, that's my known command. Uh, if I see a question mark, I'm going to print success. Uh, if I see anything else on the serial console, I'm just going to print unrecognized command. And this is what's going to allow us to test this automatically. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, again, I'm using the, the comparison function coming from new live. I, I could have used, you know, switch and used printf and stuff like that, but it gets, uh, it gets way more complicated. It, it, honestly, it's worth it if, you, if you're actually planning to use it for something. Uh, but if not, uh, you have to define a bunch of syscalls like close, exit, uh, ease, ATTY. So there's a ton of stuff that you have to do if you want to use uh, other functions. But for, for string comparison, there was no, there was no problem. Um, Okay, so like I said, we have the new code. We have the C library now. And I can, if I run that version, I, I switched my branches, by the way. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, this, is, this is great. Why is it not working? 
Uh, it's not working because I tried to use, so I tried to use standard int.h, the header file, and for a bare metal tuition that does not exist, okay? But for new live, it does exist. Um, I, again, I changed my TC libc to new live, and this is what I'm gonna need later for the, for the test case. But for now, let's rebuild it. And if I run run QME again, um, I can manually test that what I intend to do with the code is actually happening. If I type something, uh, it's just gonna say unrecognized command. If I type, uh, what else was it? OE, it says welcome. And if I type a question mark, it says success. So it is working as I intended. This is great. Now, the next thing is, that was the manual testing stuff. Okay, so the next thing that we needed uh, was actually creating a test case. I'm a lazy person, so I'm reusing stuff. Uh, I have the free Artos layer that uses this, by the way, and it, uh, I created a test case for it. It's, it's a simple echo test that basically read, reads something from the screen. So what I'm doing here is that I, I cloned the, the free Artos repo and then I added it to my bblayers.conf. That, what, what that makes is that it, uh, the test case that's coming from FreeArtos, it's already available because it's on my layers, right? And the, again, the test case is very simple. It runs a command via the serial interface. Run serial here, command. My command, I define it as a question mark and I need to match or look for a pattern that matches the output and I just look for success in this case. So very simple test case. Um, so now that we have that, I, I need to define the boot patterns that I mentioned before. Um, I still need the test image uh, stuff in there. Um, the test suite that I'm gonna run, it's going to be freeartos free underscore echo. I could, I, I could have named it anything else. Um, and then we, we set the test image uh, boot patterns the first one, uh, so to check if I reach the prompt, I'm checking for FOSM 2023. My login user is OE. My login succeeded is welcome, and my command finish is a new line in this case. So if I do that, that the way the flow is gonna work this time is the system is gonna start booting. Instead of Linux that says login here, it's going to find uh, FOSM 2023. Uh, I'm gonna send the OE user. Uh, I'm gonna get a welcome screen. Uh, greeting, I'm gonna send my question mark command and I am gonna see success on the target. And at that point I'm gonna read the output and make sure that that way I can make sure the test actually worked. And I think we're a little bit out of time so I'm just gonna run this stuff. You saw that I already defined those things in the local.conf, right? Like the, the patterns. So if I just run it with the new code and I run the <clears throat> the test image uh, task for, for this, you can see that there's a bunch of stuff there, and here it is. So the results are here. The free Artos test uh, passed because, again, it, it looked for the right string. It, sorry, it sent the right string. It saw the welcome. It sent the command. It saw success. So essentially, this is what wraps it up. It, uh, it tests that the the bare metal application was possible to be built and it was possible to run as well. And yeah, so what we saw today was uh, how does the test image works uh, for Linux, for OE in general. Uh, the bare metal tool chains for, that are in OE, we took a quick look at the bare metal example that's there, uh, how, to, how to build it, how to run in QMU, and uh, finally how to test uh, any vermal application in, in OE. That's it, thank you.